we shall begin a new topic under uh, making sense of data. This is about measure of dispersion or measures of dispersion. A measure of dispersion is also what you call the measure of scattering or degree of scattering of, of your elements in a data set. So let us suppose we are given three sets of data and and let us line this and let us line the elements of this data in a real number line. So let us describe each of this data set, which is the least scattered, which is more scattered, and which is most scattered. Which is the least scattered data set? Well, this one. Okay. Okay, this part is clustering around each other, although there is one outlier. What is more scattered? Well, this one is more scattered, but the data set which is most scattered will be this one. So our data need not be data that can be lined up in a real number line. It can be, it can be distributed in a two-dimensional space such as this. This one among the three is the least scattered data set. This one is more scattered and this one is the most scattered data set. So the measure of dispersion, okay, measure of dispersion is the measure of the degree of scattering of a set of data. The simplest measure of dispersion is the range. It is simply the difference between the maximum and minimum values of a data set. So, for example, this is our set. The elements are 6, 5, 89, 73, and 3. What is the range of A? Well, it's going to be 89. That's your maximum value in the set. And minus 3, which is the minimum value of the elements in the set. I prepared a set of uh, numbers in Excel and let us see, do we have a function for range in Excel? Well, it turns out that we do not have one function to compute for the range. You know what? I cannot find a function that uh, directly computes for the range, but we still can use the functions of Excel to look for the range. Let's say, for example, you are given a mass of data, a large set of data. And it's going to be a challenge to look for the range. Well, you can look for the maximum and then subtract the minimum. So in this case, the range is going to be equal to max. Look at that. So it's a function. And I will just highlight my data set. And then I will close it in a parenthesis. Minus. Minus what? The minimum mean. Again, Highlight your data set and then close it with a parenthesis and then enter. It's 85. So at least in this data set, our range is 85. Okay, so let us double check it. Let us double check if we indeed got it correctly. What is the max? What is the max? 88. How about the mean? What is the mean? It's 3. So 88 minus 3 is 85. So you can go to Excel. If you have a large set of data, thousands and hundreds of thousands, you can use the max and mean functions to look for the range. We have another measure for dispersion, and we call it the mean absolute deviation. M-A-D, MAD. Or we can also call it the average absolute deviation. And this is how we compute it. So, what does M of X stand for? Well, X is our set. X is our data set. And M of X stands for the measure of central tendency of the set. It can be either the mean, the median, or the mode. And then what do we do next? We get the absolute value of the difference between that, that mean. Let's say, for example, this is the mean. And each of the elements in your set, 
we get the sum and then we divide it by n. So it's something like this. Let's say, for example, I have these are my uh, these are my points in my data set. And what we do is we look for a fixed point. That fixed point is, let's say, for example, this one. And that one is our measure for the central tendency. It can be the mean of the data set. It can be the median. So what we do is we compute for the, we compute for the absolute difference okay, of each point in your set from that fixed point. Okay, and we do it, we do it for the rest, and then we obtain the sum, the sum of all this absolute difference, i from 1 to n, and then after that, we divide it by n. That is how we get the average. When we have n elements in a data set, when we wanted to get the average, we always divide it by the number of elements in the set. That's why divided by n. So let's say, for example, we have this set, 2, 4, 3, and 11. Let's get, first, let us get the mean. Well, the mean is 2 plus 4 plus 3 plus 11. That's 20. Then divided by 4, that will give you 5. That is the mean of our data set. And then we will do this. We will get the absolute difference of each element in the set from the mean. And then we divide it by 4, which is the same as multiplying by 1 fourth. And the result is 3. So the mean absolute deviation of this data set is 3. We can also get the mean absolute deviation using the median. Okay, so M of X here stands for a measure of central tendency, but it can be the mean, it can be the median, or it can, it can be the mode for as long as it is a quantitative data. So let us suppose we shall use the median. What is the median? The median is 3.5. How did that come about? Let us arrange our elements in ascending order. So you have 2, 3, 4, and 11. So our median is the midpoint of 3 and 4. And that is 3.5. And then after that, we will get the absolute difference of each element in your set from the median. So this one is equal to when we get the sum, it is equal to 10. Okay. So again, we are, we are getting the mean absolute deviation using the median. So using the median, and our median is 3.5, our MAD, the mean absolute deviation is equal to 2.5. We can obtain MAD using either the mean of our data set, the median of our data set, or the mode of our data set. The standard way to measure the degree of scattering or dispersion is the standard deviation. That's why you call it the standard. We have the population standard deviation. And you know why it's called the population. Given a population of n elements, okay, so these are the elements, x sub 1, x sub 2, up to x sub n. The standard deviation, and that is our sig uh, symbol, sigma, is... I know, it's quite uh, an equation to remember. When I first saw this equation, I was, I was more than minimally overwhelmed. It, it was quite a load, a big load of information when I first saw this. But that was because when I first had my stat, I was already second year in college. You, on the other hand, met this when you were in high school. So, what is that? How do you pronounce it? You pronounce it as mu. That's your population mean. And by the way, before you get the square root, before you get the square root of this entire thing, what you have is sigma squared 
and you call sigma squared the population variance. Now we have we have another standard deviation. We call this sample standard deviation. Given a sample of n elements, the sample standard deviation, and that is our symbol, s, small s, is where x bar, that is our mean, the sample mean. And look at the difference. In the population standard deviation, we divide it by capital N, the size, the size of the population, whereas for the sample mean, we divide it by N minus 1. If you have a large data set, it's going to be a challenge to manually compute for the population standard deviation and for the sample standard deviation, which is why the most practical way around it is to use a spreadsheet software. So I have prepared a set of numbers here, and we will get the standard deviations of these elements using the built-in function of Excel. So let's say, for example, this, these values are taken from a population. What is the population standard deviation? Well, guess what? We just have one formula for that. We have one function for that in Excel. So you enter equal sign. And look at this. If you were to type S, STD, right away, Excel will, will make a guess that you are looking for the standard deviations. So you will choose this, standard deviation dot P. That stands for the standard deviation of a population. So you click it, okay, and then you highlight the range of your data set. You close it with a parenthesis and 11 is the population standard deviation. What about, what about if this is only a subset of a population, in which case this is a sample? Again, you enter the equal sign. If you were to write STD right away, Excel is making a guess. You are looking for the standard deviation. It can be the population. It can be the sample. Standard deviation dot S. Highlight the range of your data set and then close it with a parenthesis and then enter. That's it. The population standard deviation is 11. The sample standard deviation is 11.4.